Hi, I'm Alex Sotmarie. I'm a mechanical engineer at Hexagon, and I help students and professors put our software to work. In this video, I'm going to show you, start to finish, how to do a finite element model of a rod in torsion. This is connected to an activity that you might be doing in a class, and if so, you can skip ahead to part of this video uh, when you get to open up a file. All right, let's go. As we get started, I want to give you a preview of what we'll be modeling. So we're dealing with a cylindrical rod of length 25 centimeters and radius 2.5 centimeters. We'll scale that to meters when we get into apex. The left end of the rod is supported by a cantilever type support, a rigid support. The right hand side has a 10,000 newton meter moment applied to it. Um, I've drawn this using the typical double arrow vector notation, but you could also imagine a twisting in the counterclockwise direction as seen from the right. The rod is going to be steel with a modulus of elasticity of 205 gigapascals and a Poisson's ratio nu of 0.3. To model a rod in torsion, first I'll create the rod. I'll go to Geometry Primitives and click on Cylinder. I'll select a radius of 0.025 meters and a length of 0.25 meters. Now we need to also position this cylinder. I'll put it at the origin 0, 0, 0. And I want it oriented so that it's aligned with the x-axis. So I'll enter these angles here, 90, 90, 0, and that's all in degrees. Uh, and I'll hit enter. If you're not working in degrees, uh, you would need to enter that in terms of radians. Um, so I'll click the green check mark to apply that, and that will create the cylinder. If I wanted to create more cylinders, I could, but for now, I'm going to just click exit. I can click and drag with the middle mouse button to reorient the cylinder. I want X pointing to the right and I want Y pointing up. By clicking and dragging in kind of a circular motion, you can rotate the part. I'll click the left and right mouse buttons at the same time to resize the part, and now it fills the viewport. I'm going to mesh the part. So I'll click on Meshing Tools, Hex Meshing, and I'll use a mesh size of 0.01 meters and I'll use quadratic elements. I'll click on the part now. And I'll exit this menu. Now I'm going to apply a moment to the end of the part. I'll mouse over loads and boundary conditions and click on force moment. And make sure that the application method is remote and that the distribution tape is rigid. I'll click this check mark for MX and enter 1E4 for 10,000 Newton meters. I'll hit enter. I'll put my cursor in the viewport and I um, actually want to be able to reach the right hand side of that rod. So I'll hold the shift button and click and drag with the middle mouse button to reposition the part. Now we can reach that face. I have faces selected in the pick filter and I'll click on the part. And I want to make sure that I'm selecting the center point of the rod so I can have average points selected in the pick filter. And I'll click on that and make sure that that part is highlighted when I click. Great. Now the moment is applied. I'm going to close this. Let's save this progress. I'll hit File, Save As and navigate to a good place in my file system to save the part. I'll click in file name and I'll enter just rod as the name of this part and I can hit enter. To demonstrate opening the file, first I've got to close it. So I'll do file, close. Now I'm going to open up the part file. I'll click file, open, and navigate to find the file that I'd made, but what I see here is actually a folder. The file that you really open in Apex is called project.apex, and that's what you'll double click. The project name that you use is always applied to a folder, and the file you open is always named project.apex. To save a copy of the progress from later, I'm actually going to work in a different file. So I'll hit File, Save As, go back up a level so that I'm in that folder I was working in, and I'll name this new project Rod, and then I'll enter my initials. And that's what I'm working from. You see how the part name is now Rod and then my initials. When I loaded the part file, Apex reoriented it, 
And so I want to get it back so that X is pointing to the right. I'll click on the letter Z on my coordinate system there. And so now we're looking at the Z axis. I'll right click on the little blue circle that represents the Z axis in this perspective. And that rotates the part. So this is pretty convenient. Again, I can click and drag with the middle mouse button, revealing the moment on the right hand side of the rod. And I want to apply a constraint on the left hand side. I'll go to loads and boundary conditions and click on displacement constraints and select spherical. And then I can click on this end of the rod. And again, it helps to have faces selected in the pick filter. So I'll close this now. Now I'm going to create material property information and then apply it to the part. To enter the information, I'll click materials and then create material. Let's call this steel and enter an elastic modulus of 205E9 and a Poisson's ratio of 0.3. To connect the dots between that material property information and the finite element model, I will click on 3D element properties create 3D element property. I'll name this property steel 3D. And under material ID, select steel. Now I'll click assign 3D element property and select the part. Now the part is steel. I'll close these menus. Now I'll show you how you can confirm that you've applied that material property correctly. We can look in the model browser here, and we can inspect many aspects of our model. I'm going to click this triangle here, hover over Steel 3D, and I see that my part highlights, indicating that it is steel. Now I'm going to set up a simulation. I'll right click on the project here, and click Place an Analysis Scene. This checklist here is green, so that means the simulation is ready to go. Uh, I can generate a simulation scenario and click the yellow runner to run it. Now I will click Post Processing, which will let me inspect the results. By default, Apex shows the part with kind of a distorted shape, which can be useful in some ways, but I think is more distracting in this torsion case. So I'll click on this to turn off that exaggerated deformation. Now I'll click on Fringe to be able to inspect my results. I'll click Expand Collapse, and that will let me choose what I'm looking at. I'll change the units from Pascal to Megapascal. So we're looking at like 700 Megapascal. 7E2 is 700. By default, Apex uses something called Von Mises Stress, which may or may not be covered in most solid mechanics courses. Um, I'm going to switch that over to Maximum Shear which will let us get numbers that compare well with what you would find in an engineering textbook. Uh, now I'm going to change the quantity from stress. Let's look at how much this thing is moving, right? So we'll look at displacements translational. And this shows a color map of where every portion of the part has moved. Now I'll click displacements rotational. That will show me the displacement of the end of the rod where the load was applied. The rest of the rod is zero, but that's simply because the rotational displacement is not calculated for most of this part. So that's a little fictitious. But I can look here and see that the end of the rod has been rotated 2.96, and I can check the units. That's degrees, 2.96 degrees. Now let's modify the model and see what happens when we double the diameter of the rod. I will exit post-processing. I'll go back to the Model tab here to go back into the Model Browser, and I'll click this triangle to reveal the cylinder part. I'll double-click on the cylinder geometry and change the radius from 0.025 meters to 0.05 meters. So I'll double-click that text to select it, 0.05, and I'll click the green check mark. Apex will now update every aspect of the model. I'll close that and I'll click on the yellow runner to run a new simulation. And I'll enter post-processing. And I now see that the angular displacement is much smaller than what it was before. I can also inspect 
the stress, changing it back to maximum shear stress, and compare with my previous result. So that's how to model a rod in torsion using finite element analysis with MSC Apex. Students, you should take a deep look at the results to see how stress and displacement vary along and within the rod. That'll be helpful for building your engineering intuition. I want everybody to check the description for different ways that we can help you out. There are links to download our software and ways to contact us so that you can get access to instructor resources if you want to use this or related activities in the classroom. Um, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments. If you want to send me a message directly, you can reach me on LinkedIn. Professors, if you're interested in teaching using engineering simulation, especially with Hexagon products, I definitely want to hear from you. Get in touch. All right, everybody, have a great day. Bye.